Welcome to another episode of Legitimate Matters. I am your host, William Paris. If you've been keeping up with Legitimate Matters, you know that we've had such amazing shows over the past couple of years. We've talked about so many different topics, including politics, and there's so much controversy uh, in the United States these days, controversy in politics. And one controversial topic has been climate change. Well, my guest today is a repeat guest and a friend of Legitimate Matters. Dr. Rick Smith, who is a scientific consultant, spoke to us about climate change in two episodes that we did previously. And I'd like to welcome Rick back to the show. Thanks, William. It's nice to be here again. It's great to be on your show again. Absolutely. Fantastic. Uh, you and I have had great conversations in the past, and I can talk to you for hours. But for those people, uh, the viewers who did not catch the uh, previous shows, and if you haven't caught the previous shows, shame on you, but you can go to LegitimateMatters.com and see those. But tell us about Global Aquatic Research. So Global Aquatic Research is a scientific research company. Um, we are essentially a network of scientific consultants and laboratories, and we specialize in the aquatic sciences. So we work with municipalities for local environmental problems. Mm -hmm. uh, we work for universities. And essentially what we do is we handle research projects that are within our kind of domain of specialties. We're all experts in our field. We're all practicing scientists, except that instead of working under the umbrella of a university, we're independent. So we do everything from planning a research project, analyzing samples, to working up data and, and writing reports. And it's everything from the global scale, looking at things like climate change feedbacks and the carbon cycle, all the way down to local environmental issues. When someone says the word or they hear um, uh, geochemical research, how would you define geochemical? Someone might hear that and not be 100% yep. sure. So the word geochemical is kind of a mix between geology and chemistry. So really it's the study of the chemistry of rocks. Um, but really what it, it's expanded beyond that and it's really how chemistry, how organic molecules or inorganic compounds cycle through the environment. Um, how they cycle through the biosphere, how they cycle through the geosphere, and through um, the cryosphere, which is uh, uh, all different forms of water on, on the planet. So it's looking at the earth and chemistry as is, is a whole. Now, someone watching this show is going to say uh, biosphere and all of the different terminologies, but basically we're talking about the atmosphere. Yeah, and, and of course the atmosphere is part of it. So okay. we tend to compartmentalize things. Okay. The biosphere would be essentially anything living on, okay. on Earth. All right. So it's the interaction of biology in our atmosphere okay. in, our, in our waters. All right. Yeah. So it's, it's the study of the water, and, and, and tell me more about that. The water. Mm -hmm. So one of the things, my really specialty is looking at Earth's carbon cycle. Mm -hmm. we, we know where Earth's carbon cycle is important because we see rising carbon dioxide concentrations in the atmosphere, and that's causing global warming. Okay. Um, but there's carbon in all sorts of other forms. I mean, we know that we're made of carbon, and all living organisms are made of organic molecules that contain carbon. But there's carbon in the water, there's a lot of carbon in the ocean, there's carbon in sediments of the ocean, there's carbon in soils, there's carbon locked up in forests. And those all have these interactions between each other. Mm -hmm. And it's important to study the flow of carbon through those systems when we try to look at what's going on in the atmosphere and what's going on with our with our climate. And over the past year, certainly since you were on the show, there's been a lot of changes that we saw in 2018. Share some of that. 2018 has been a really interesting year. Mm -hmm. um, to start off, it was the fourth hottest year on record, okay. global average temperatures, which puts it as the fourth year in the row that we've broken the record. The fourth year in a row? The fourth year in a row. Oh, wow. Yep. Okay. So 2018, 2017, 2016, and 2015 were all the hottest global, all had the hottest global average temperatures on record. Um, we saw two massive wildfires in California, and in fact, just in the last several years, California's had three of its, of its largest wildfires. Um, 
this year, California uh, saw about two, th two million acres burned um, by actually, we know about the bigger wildfires, but um, they, there actually were over 8,000 of them this year. Well, I, I want to talk about the wildfires in California, but I want to come back to that. Yep. But with the, uh, this being the, the fourth uh, record-breaking temperatures or, or, yep. or heat rising, help me to say that, uh, in, in the past four years, this is also going to affect uh, rising sea levels. That, that's right. So the most interesting thing about the science of, of climate change and sea level rise is that our methods are getting a lot better. Okay. Computer, computing power is getting more accessible mm -hmm. and cheaper. Our models are getting better. There's some huge reports that have come out recently, the National Climate Assessment and the IPCC just put out a special report where now we can actually look at what's in store for us if we if we stop all fossil fuel emissions over the next 10 years versus 20 versus 30. Okay. What's gonna happen if we keep global temperatures at 1.5 degrees Celsius above average versus say uh, two degrees or five degrees Celsius above average. So right now we have more information than we've ever had about how climate change is going to affect us and what we can do to, to stop it. So there's been a lot of interesting science going on this, this year as well, in addition to continuing to monitor these extremes. Um, we also had Hurricane Michael, which was the fourth strongest mm. in terms of winds to ever the make landfall in the, wow. in the Atlantic coast. Yeah, well, it hit the Florida Panhandle. So you, mentioned, you mentioned IPCC. Yep. What is that? IPCC is the International Panel on Climate Change. Okay. Um, it's commissioned by the UN, and they put out a report every five years. And these are massive reports that bring together all these different aspects of science to put out the most relevant, up-to-date information on climate change. So we're talking about now all of this new information, new facts, new studies. And it seems like uh, 2018 has been really uh, groundbreaking in terms of new information. Yeah, ab absolutely. It, it really has. And so what, what we've been learning, really, the, the most important point that's come out of this year is that we've got about 12 years. Oh. This coming decade is going to be the decade where we do something or we don't. And now we can actually start to narrow down what the consequences are going to be of, of not doing anything over the next 10 years. And what we now know is that the changes that we need to make to everything we do, to our, to our lives, to our infrastructure, to our industries, to our power generation, everything needs to transform incredibly rapidly in the next decade if we're going to mitigate the worst effects of, of climate change. That's what these reports are telling us. Wow. So that's really an eye-opener. And to me, what I'm hearing you say is that while we are talking about so many other uh, issues that are taking place in the United States, of course, we don't have to talk politics because we know how volatile and, and, and really out of control that is. But one thing that I don't really hear that often is uh, the dangers and the direction that the planet is going in in terms of climate change. I'm listening to you today on this show, and I find it quite alarming that mainstream media and the government is really not emphasizing the changes that we have to make. I still see people uh, doing con th th certain things that are detrimental uh, to the planet, uh, but there's just not enough being done uh, to steer us in another direction. We're going to go to break, but when we come back, let's talk more about some of the IPCC reports and other things that you have discovered. I want to talk about Greenland also when we come back after the break. Don't you dare change that channel because this is a great conversation with my guest, Dr. Rick Smith. We're talking about climate change. This is a story you don't want to miss. We'll be right back.